Fueled by DeathCast. Once we decide on a physical situation that will allow us to investigate foreign space that we haven't been to before and develop some kind of vocabulary that will have some capacity for surprise, danger, um, really being able to take us into foreign territory spatially and temporally and force-wise, force fields. And I finally, I thought it was going to limit it for many years. And then finally I said, I'm going to do it. And then we built it, we bought it, um, and we've been developing this since last October. That's sort of the method, but I draw, this is a, this is a drawing, for, these are the drawings for this, but I choreograph my drawing, trying to imagine it's possible, but really, what you just saw us do is how we make our final decisions. Because that was what's so incredible. And you actually answered another question that I had was, it does this stem from, because it seems like you put a lot of science behind a lot of what you're doing. In, in, a, in a very quotidian way. <laughs> correct, correct. But, but I wanted to know, and you said you answered that, if, if, this, if you actually visualize this on paper first, or if it was kind of in the moment, and that's how we kind of made that. But that's very interesting that you had this drawing, you had this built, and then kind of are working that space out. Like I was noticing just now as we were watching it, like uh, one of the directions you gave, and, and it was so cool to see this in real time, was can you hold each other's hands as you go? And that's been a question for a while, but then I thought if it's not perfect unison, it will lead to just wrapping the room right. and shoulders and whatnot. But they've been getting better at perfect unison, and so they really did. It was so cool because like, you pose that question, basically you say that to the universe. Yeah. You know, like, hey universe, is this possible? And, yeah. and, and you're actually here and you're like, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it went around more than once. And it's interesting because you say hold hands, but then really when they stretch your hands out, they're with the shoulders. Right. And really, they have to either go down like this, and then go up like this. Yeah. Like, like low V, high V. It's just amazing what surprises. You have to be humble enough to ask a question that you don't know the answer to. Yeah. You really don't know the answer to any question you ask in terms of movement, space, and time. It, it's so true, especially when you're when you're utilizing it in such a dimensional way. You know, you're not just on the ground, just figuring out how the body can move like this. You are up in the air, you know, and rotating and figuring all yeah. that out. And then that's what's so interesting about it. And the other thing that I took away from this, and it's something that you talk about a lot with is the emotion in both in me. Just watching them, you know, because my 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 neck is cranked up watching them up, so I'm already I feel uplifted, you know, and as they're as they're creating some of these motions as they as they look like they're a fish out of water or they're flying or stuff like that, I'm feeling, I'm literally feeling how they are like enacting it. And it's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No, and it's it's like you just don't know. You could spend forty thousand dollars and go, uh oh, <laughs> bad mistake, man. I, I will see. I got to do something. I better hurry up. And I think that I think that the humility of, of the invention of action moments is really ever present. You can't get. You don't really get settled into it because you just. It increases your capacity to understand that you know nothing about forces once you're dealing with real force. And the right side up, I'm, my reputation is in the dance world, but I am a dan the dance world. There is actually a dance program here at Skidmore, and um, they don't like me, and they have a bed to say, hey, hi, welcome, Elizabeth, I'm so happy you're here. And, and the initial thing was, you're going to hurt our kids, and you're going to, it's dangerous, it's not just dangerous, they think it's violent. So here is my critique of them, and I do it gingerly and kindly, but you can't just be on one piece it would be like having only one octave in music. It would be like having, no, what do they do in mathematics, where you basically invent a new number system. Mm -hmm. um, it, like the, the um, what do you call those, the I, the square root of I, imaginary numbers. Yeah. And it doesn't work for everything, but it solves some problems that came up and required them to, to invent a new number system. Yeah. To answer the questions, it became more, you know, more idiosyncratic or really when they got into quantum university. To get exactly what application imaginary numbers have. But you can't just have one basic approach. Right. And, and you can't decide that the body is a subject. Because everyone knows what the body can do. You cannot provoke a surprise. If everyone were honest in the theater, dancing is something you want to do. And watching it has, I think, been a fail, a fail for them. Because they are unrigorous in their investigation of the tenets of movement. 
which are time, real time, yeah. action time, causal yeah. time, space, down on the ground, yeah. the air, becomes multi-directional and you can't understand where you are. And also purposes. And so my argument is just that, that you know, music is a true enemy of dance, that you really have to deal with not needing landing out of the equation. You know, yeah. like the whole idea that, okay, it should be graceful, let's do all these techniques, so we need to ground from our feet, and we return to our feet, and we are, we are not going to, we are, it's going to be smooth, and the transitions will be smooth, and grace is this, and it did apply to the body, and calls to time and space, and that's just absolutely untrue. And I'm here to tell you, I'm sure of it, and sometimes I'll say to them, in 50 years, we will both be dead. Talk to person yeah. say that. And you realize that I am right so wrong. I like to say that because I just am trying to provoke them into some kind of new set of decisions that the body won't do anything on stage that will ever be able to surprise anyone. Yeah. Not anyone. And I know that's true.